I am here today to show you guys all the new animals added to Planet Zoo with a new Grasslands Animal Pack. Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. First of all, huge thanks to Frontier for providing me with an early access to this new DLC. This is why I am able to show you guys those animals a bit earlier. If you are wondering, don't worry, you haven't missed anything, the new pack will be still out tomorrow. Uh, Frontier just allowed us to publish our videos a day before the official release. Uh, there will be another new video on my channel right now uh, covering all the new things uh, coming to you with a new update, new free update 1.12. Uh, so if you like to see it, I would definitely put the link down in the description and on the screen. Uh, so if you'll finish this video, you can go and see what else will be added for free to the game, such as those lovely plants that you can see in front of you, those are the three things coming. Uh, this is the new zoo that I created for the showcase of this uh, DLC, so I hope you guys like it. There are a lot of new things in this zoo. Uh, and yeah, the new animals, I think that they are some of the best ones in the game right now, uh, so I cannot wait to show you guys all of them, so let's jump right into it. Let's start this showcase with an animal that probably is my favorite from this new pack, and this is the Nine Banded Armadillo. Just look at the details on that thing. Uh, those small scale on the armor, the hair on the back and under the neck in here, and of course it decided to go to the burrow, because yeah, the new armadillos can use the small burrows, and this one decided to come in there. Uh, the, mo the mother, because it was a male, the female, is also in here but we can have a look at the baby that is standing in here look how tiny it is look at all of those scales and how well it looks we can have a look into the burrow uh, to see the entire family that is probably sleeping there right now uh, so as you guys can see here are the babies and here are the parents is sleeping. Uh, so what is very cool about the armadillos is that they can use this uh, termit mount that I think only the um, giant anteaters up to this point could use. So this is so so cool. I think that this little guy might be stuck. I don't know what happens. It just got teleported out of the uh, of the burrow and now it is here but it's totally okay. Uh, so yeah this is the nine banded armadillo such a cool animal such some, something different something so so detailed we didn't have an animal right like that in a game so i am so happy that those guys were added maybe we will be able to move uh, it once again out of the burrow so we can have another look at the armadillo uh okay can i click it please okay yeah so this is the nine bended armadillo just look at this guy. So let's have a look at the Zoopedia for the Nine Banded Armadillo. Really lovely picture in here. As you guys can see, the Nine Banded Armadillo is least concerned. The population in the wild is unknown. Uh, it lives in North, Central and South Af America. Uh, the biomes are desert, tropical, grassland and temperate. So quite a lot of plants that you can use for those guys. It needs a quite a small uh, enclosure for one, for two. It's slightly bigger. Uh, the fence needs to be a great one, one meter high. Uh, when it comes to the species data, we can have up to two of them, one male and one female in one habitat. They are shy, but the guests can enter their habitats, which is, which is really, really uh, nice. Uh, they have four offspring per mating event, and yes, I can confirm that, and they are quite easy to reproduce in the captivity. Uh, they have quite a lot of enrichment items that they can use, for example, the forage box which I couldn't fit in there uh, because this habitat is very small but they can use the termit mite which makes me very very happy uh, when it comes to the interspecies enrichment it doesn't have any with any other animals so let's have a look at the another animal that is added with this pack 
So, in front of you, there is a maned wolf. Really beautiful animal, really majestic. I am so happy that they were added finally to the game. By the way, you can see the small baby uh, here in the background. Uh, this uh, canid, this dog, this wolf-like animal, because it is not a wolf actually, it is uh, like different separate species uh, of canid, but uh, it has those long legs that help it uh, hunt in the tall grasses. It has this like really saturated color, really nice face, large ears. It is such a nice animal, such a nice made animal and I am so happy that it was added. I cannot wait to build for it. It is actually an omnivorous animal. It eats, eats a lot of uh, different things such as insects, smaller mammals, smaller like lizards, birds, but also it, leaves, it eats uh, fruits. So you can use for example this uh, spiky fruit spike tree for it uh, as an enrichment item. Uh, this was the male, we have also a female in here. There is no difference between them whatsoever. Uh, by the way, this is the uh, education I bought for it. We also have all those signs, but I will showcase them at the uh, end of the video. And uh, when it comes to the baby, this is how the baby looks. This is just a smaller version of a parent, but uh, it is not so saturated and maybe it has more, more more like bulky like paws or something uh, but yeah really cute little guy when it comes to the Zoopedia facts for the maned wolf another beautiful picture in here uh, the maned wolf is near threatened uh, the population in the wild is around 17,000 uh, it lives in South America the biomes include tropical and grassland all of those animals actually have the grassland biome in there all of the animals from this new DLC it totally makes sense uh, they need quite a big habitat so for two of them you need one time 1240 meters uh, the fence needs to be great too and it needs to be high it needs to be three meters those guys can jump uh, we can have up to two of them uh, one male and one female or if you want to keep only females or only males you can have up to three uh, it is confident when it comes to the relation with humans the guests cannot obviously enter the habitat uh, it has one to five offspring per mating event and it's even easy to reproduct in the captivity. Uh, it has quite a lot of enrichment items that you can use for it, as I told you guys before. And actually what is really, really cool, it has the interspecies enrichment with capybara and giant anteater. Yes, I saw those enclosures in different zoos around the world. Uh, so uh, sometimes we see them housed with capybaras, giant, giant anteaters, or even tapirs. Uh, the wolf, the main wolf, uh, is omnivorous as I told you guys and it eats smaller creatures it won't attack a giant anteater or capybara that's why they are often kept together the next very very beautiful and exceptionally well done animal is a caracal I just love those cats. Just look how it looks. I love those tuft ears. I think that this is called tuft. How those hairs in here move when it moves the hair. When it moves in general, it is just laying right now. But look at this animal. It is so beautiful. It is a cat that lives on those more deserty, uh, in those more deserty environments. Uh, it is a smaller cat, so it's so nice to have an animal like that in the game. Uh, but yeah, those eyes, those ears, this coloration, this is just beautiful. Uh, so we are looking at the, f at the female. Uh, the male is slightly bigger. It is in here. Uh, so you can, oh, it is jumping. We can have a look at the male in here. Uh, also, they have different color variations. So this one is a bit more like orangey and more like uh, dark. And also somewhere in here, we have the little kittens. And wait till you see them. Where are you guys? Don't, oh, here they are. Just look at it. This is the cutest animal in the game, I think so, because it just looks like this little, little kitten that you can have in your home <laughs> when you adopt a little cat. It is so beautiful. Like, look at it. 
Uh, so they have those, again, those tuft ears that just look uh, amazing. And they are just so fluffy with those, like, things on their hats and the beautiful uh, uh, eyes, like the coloration of the eyes is really, really nice. So I didn't expect to love this animal as much as I love it. So I am very surprised by it, but I totally, totally love them. So the caracal is least concerned, the population is again unknown. Uh, this is the picture, really nice picture. Uh, when it comes to the natural habitat, it lives in Africa and Asia. The biomes include desert, grassland and temperate. So again, a lot of plants that you can use for them. Uh, it needs this much of space for two of them at 600 meters. And this is the only animal from the new pack that I actually need some climbing structure and that is climbing in general older others cannot do this uh, so the so the of course the fence needs to be climb proof and it needs to be at least three meters high uh, when it comes to the species data you can have one up to two of those in one enclosure uh, they are shy and the guests obviously cannot enter the habitat uh, we have uh, one to four offspring per mating event and the reproduction in captivity is average as, as you guys, guys can see, the male is uh, slightly taller uh, than the female. Uh, when it comes to the enrichment items, quite a lot you can use for those guys. Uh, and it obviously doesn't have any uh, enrichment, um, uh, interspecies enrichment with other, other animals because it would simply fight other animals, I think. So next up, we have a beautiful emu and this guy just decided to go for a run. Uh, those guys are just so beautiful again. Uh, I am so in love with the animals from this pack. Just look at those textures here on the feathers. Just look at this neck and the coloration in here. The beautiful eyes uh, and those really like nice looking legs and I love how it runs <laughs> but yeah this guy is so so beautiful I am so happy that they were finally added to the game I wanted to have them from the very very beginning because I think that they are such an iconic zoo animal and they make also those really interesting sounds just like a normal emus do so uh, if you'll play a game yourself because i don't know if you can hear them but if you'll play the game yourself so they'll definitely pay attention to the sounds that they make such a beautiful animal so this is the male uh, i believe i don't think that there's any difference between the males and the females this is the female maybe it is slightly bigger but i'm not sure but here we also have some babies so the babies have this uh like really cool pattern like those uh little it is moving in quite a like interesting way, but they have this really beautiful pattern of those stripes. It have they have this really beautiful face, like this tiny little birdie. So, yeah, really cool animal. Really happy that they were added. So when it comes to the emu. Uh, it is least concerned. There is a huge population of those guys, as you guys can see. Uh, the natural habitat, obviously they come from Oceania. The biomes are desert, tropical and grassland. So quite a nice roster. Uh, the, this is the land requirement for one of them. Uh, the, the fence needs to be great too and quite like a smaller fence, I would say. Uh, we can have up to six of them in one enclosure, five males and up to five females. Uh, they are confident, but the guests cannot enter the habitat. Uh, just as I thought, the females are a bit taller than the males. Uh, and they have one to five offspring per mating event and the reproduction in captivity is easy. They have quite a lot of uh, different enrichment items that they can use. They can, for example, use the waterfall and metal frame, which is quite like interesting. They can actually, I know that they can swim, but I didn't test in the game. I'm sure that they will would be able to swim because for example, the uh, Kasuari, it was able to swim. So those guys are probably able as well. 
so they can also use the slow feeder and the forage box enrichment and, and they don't have any interspecies enrichment with any other animals so here we have the red necked wallaby an animal again coming from australia a really really beautiful animal i am so happy again that those guys were added because just look at them and how fluffy they are uh, if you are wondering i don't think that this is they use the same rig as the red kangaroo because the jumps as you guys can see are totally different uh, and they can use some other i think enrichment items that the kangaroos such as this feeder uh, so yeah this is the female the female is slightly smaller and has this more like uh, like grayish coloration and the males that are for example in here but they are going to the shadow I think that this is the male yes uh, so the male is slightly more like colored it has this like a red neck basically red uh, red upper part of the body uh, and this is where the name comes from so yeah those hops little like jumps are so adorable just look at those guys uh, so yeah really happy to have them a uh, really really nice animal and let's find a baby because I know that we have several of those guys uh, and just look at it this is so so adorable and cute and also tiny those big e eyes are just killing me hello little guy I'm so happy to have you in the game uh, so yeah, this was our red necked Wallaby. As you guys can see, we can have quite a big group of them. And what I want to do uh, is try to compare them with the red kangaroo. So let me bring one of those guys in here so you can see the comparison. Okay, so the male kangaroo just arrived in this habitat and you guys can see uh, the difference between those guys. The, like the jumps are totally different they do those bigger like hoops or jumps or something those guys are moving in those like really tiny little jumps and are tons more <laughs> adorable for me but yeah uh, maybe if we move someone next to you we can actually see what the actual like difference is between those guys so yeah, as you guys can see, this one is definitely more like chunky and smaller. This one is like leaner and big, bigger. And when it comes to the Zoopedia for the red-necked Wallaby, uh, the, it is a least concerned animal. Uh, it lives in Oceania. The biomes are grassland and temperate. They don't need a lot of space. They are small, so it makes sense. Uh, and they need quite a high fence, so it needs to be three meters. They can jump really high. Uh, we can have up to 30 of them in, in one enclosure. It doesn't matter if those are females or males in the red kangaroo you can have only one male because they will fight otherwise in here you can have 29 males and one female and they wouldn't fight uh, the relation with humans is confident and the guests can enter can enter the habitat and it makes me so so happy because i actually recently been to the walkthrough wallaby enclosure in copenhagen zoo and i was petting a wallaby and i can tell you that this is the best experience of my life so I am happy that I am able to recreate that in Planet Zoo. As you can see, the males are slightly bigger than the females. Uh, they have one offspring per mating even. I didn't see actually the birth animation if it comes out of the pouch, the baby, if the baby comes out of the pouch, pouch or not, but I am sure that it probably does. And the reproduction in captivity is easy. Uh, they can use quite a lot of uh, the enrichment items, which I I'm happy about and there is no interspecies enrichment with any other Australian animals. You are now looking at the best designed ungulate in the game for 100%. This is the blue wildebeest, another animal added with this new pack and it looks just beautiful. 
I am so deeply in love. I know that this was quite a controversial pick. Not many people were like happy with it because we have the Black Wildebeest already in the game. Uh, we are still missing so many iconic ungulates such as Blackback and other ones. But this animal looks so beautiful. I mean, this mane in here, the coloration, the stripes, the horns, the eyes, the face. Maybe you cannot see it right now because of the uh, of the sun. But oh my god, I think that this is one of the best animals in the game when it comes to the whole design model and just the way it looks is so good. Just. It's so, so wonderful, and it really shows how much uh, Frontier improved with, with their design uh, of the animals. I will, like, send in this habitat in the middle a Black Wildebeest, the animal from the base game that has already three years, uh, and so that you guys can compare. But right now we are looking at the female, and we should have a male somewhere in here. Yes, this is probably a male, yeah. Uh, so the male is slightly bigger and it has like this uh, whole black, I don't know, coloration uh, near the head. The head is also a bit bigger, it has more of those stripes than the female. Uh, the female, as you guys can see, has some of the brown in here. And of course, we have uh, some of the little babies that are totally adorable with those little pointy uh, like um, horns in here uh, those tiny smaller manes and this really nice colors uh, that uh, in the real life is helping them to blend in the tall with the tall grasses Okay, so we have the Black Wildebeest here in front of us and I think that right away you guys can see the difference. I mean, it is still a nice animal, but uh, the textures, the hair in here on the mane, the tail, uh, everything is just like, I don't know, two levels uh, like down, <laughs> I don't even know how to call it, but... It, Maybe if they will stand still and not move so much, I uh, will be able to see it more. But this definitely looks more realistic. This looks a bit more cartoonish, as you guys can see them next to each other. This really shows the improvement in the design of the animals uh, that Frontier is recently like uh, releasing. The new ones are just amazing. Oh, there is the nice angle to compare those guys so yeah i am so happy to see the new blue wildebeest to just you know compare those two really like similar animals to each other and see all the way uh, see all the improvement that was has been made and this makes me so so happy so, the, here is a Zoopedia for the Blue Wildebeest. It is the least concerned. There are more than one and a half million of those guys in Africa. Uh, the natural habitat, of course, is Africa. The biome uh, this grassland. Uh, they don't need a big enclosure, like 410 uh, square meters for one of those guys. Uh, it, the fence doesn't need to be too high, 1.25 meters, the grade 2. Uh, then we uh, can have have four up to 20 of those in one enclosure and only one male don't put two males in there because they'll be fighting uh, they are no troll with humans uh, the guests cannot enter their habitats uh, the male is a bit uh, taller than a female uh, and they have one offspring per mating event and reproduction in captivity is very easy and i can confirm that just look at the number of babies in, the, in here uh, when it comes to the uh, research status there are quite a lot of uh, enrichment items i feel like i'm saying this for all of those item, uh, animals that they are quite a lot but they implemented quite a lot of them in fact for all of those animals 
animals. Uh, when it comes to the interspecies enrichment, there are so many uh, an animals that it likes to be, uh, you know, kept with. Uh, the buffaloes, the other wildebeest, as I showed you guys, those won't have any problems with each other whatsoever. Uh, the common ostrich, the wharf hog, zebras, uh, and the giraffes, antelopes, rhinoceros, and the springbok and Thompson's gazelle. So, the last out of all the habitat animals, we still have one or even five <laughs> exhibit animals, but the last one from all the uh, habitat animals is the striped hyena. This was a very controversial animal. A lot of you guys didn't like the way it looked uh, on the screenshots that we got. Uh, I must say that at first I loved it, then I had some, you know, different opinions because I read so many of those comments. And right now, I like it. Maybe it's not my favorite animal in the game, but I still think that it's cool that it was added. It is another animal. It has this really nice fur in here. Uh, like the mane is in fact also like included in on the neck because some people like were doubting it that it's not in here. Maybe it should be a little bit fuller, but uh, it is still there. Uh, it has this really be beautiful, huge uh, like ears. I like the face actually, uh, and the pattern on this animal is also really nice. So those are two um, adults, and we of course have also the small ones in here. So uh, here's one of them, a uh, cuter version of the parent. Uh, so yeah, a little, I wanted to say puppy, but I don't know how you call a small hyena. Okay, I hope that they won't kill each other, but just to show you guys the comparison, this is the spotted hyena from the base game, this is the striped hyena from, from the new DLC. The spotted hyena is definitely like bigger, taller, more bulky uh, than the uh, striped one. Uh, and obviously it had spots, this one has stripes, <laughs> that's why they are called in the way they are. Uh, and yeah, uh, Oh, we can actually see some animation. That's so nice. Uh, but yeah, this is the comparison if you wondered how much they are different from uh, each other. Okay, let's have a look at the Zoopedia facts for the striped hyena. So the striped hyena is near threatened. Uh, this is the population size in the wild. It lives in Africa and Asia. Uh, the biomes are desert, tropical, grassland and temperate. So again, quite a lot of plants you can use for those guys. It needs quite a big habitat, uh, to be honest, for how small it is. Uh, the great of the fence is too, it, it doesn't need a very high fence. Uh, we can have only up to two when it comes to the male and female. If you do the bachelor group size or female bachelor, you can have up to seven. So this is quite interesting. Uh, they uh, are neutral with humans. The humans obviously cannot enter the habitat. Uh, the male is supposed to be a bit taller or uh, bigger than the female. I cannot see the difference. I don't know. Maybe it was because I adopted a very like... Uh, a small male and a very big female, but uh, yeah, the, there should be some difference between them. Uh, they have two to four offspring per mating event and they are easy to reproduce in captivity. Uh, those are the arrangement items for them. Uh, some fun facts and of course they uh, cannot be uh, in uh, with they don't get the enrichment uh, from any other animals being held held with any other animals oh my god so much talking in this video there are so many new animals uh, that my tongue is just like twisting so we are right now in the butterfly walkthrough exhibit this is basically the same exhibit that was added for the bats in the Twilight Park, but right now you can use it for the butterflies. There are five different kinds of butterflies, species of butterflies, I should say, uh, and you can either mix them all together or you can do separate walkthrough exhibits for all of them. It's up to you. Uh, when it comes to the walkthrough exhibit, it is again uh, customizable, but there's a new thing. 
Uh, you can have the glass one, you can have the solid walls, maybe, uh, yeah, I'll show you here. Uh, or you can have the no option just as for the bats, but there is a new facade, the new material, and this is the netting. Uh, so you can have like this really fine like mesh netting or something uh, for the bats, uh, for them to, to prevent them from escaping simply. They didn't include the normal wire mesh like this uh, netting or something because they would be able to just fit in between though in between those uh, little mesh pieces or I don't know how we call it the ho those holes and escape so we have the new netting option and it's really really nice I must say uh, when it comes to the layout we have for example the nectar feeder uh, which is in here we have the ripe fruits uh, which is in here uh, we have this like sugar uh, water dish it's quite of some of those butterflies are in here uh, we have some uh, different plants like those plants are in here this one is like I think it is default uh, this plant so you can add and we have the mister in here we have the ferns and we have other kinds of ferns in here uh, so we can add them or uh, you know delete them I actually wish that we had those plants as you know individually pl placed plants that you can add to your exhibits because they are really beautiful so front here if you are watching please give us those plants <laughs> because I I would love to use them uh, this one and this one is also nice so uh, why don't we have them uh, so yeah this is the walkthrough exhibit uh, as you guys probably know by now we have five different kinds of uh, butterflies so as you know we can uh, add them all together as I told you guys uh, and those are the butterflies you can go to the animals and then in the species uh, in exhibit you can choose the ones that you like to for example look at so the cloudless sulfur I would like to have a look at it and okay it's here it looks like this uh, it is like this yellowish butterflies, uh, butterfly, but I must say that all of those models of those butterflies are so, so, so amazing. Like they are just, I don't know, they're such a, like, even though they are so tiny, they are so detailed. This is the same story as we had with the uh, with the bats. They were just exceptionally made. Of course, again, those are looped animations. A lot of those butterflies are just sitting there on their different spots, but some of them are flying. We are only looking at the cloudless, but I am sure, yeah, we will change for this guy. I'm not sure how it is called, uh, sorry, but it is also a very beautiful one. Uh, maybe, okay, maybe I will actually not be an ignorant and I will go a species by species. So we, here we have the European peacock, uh, which looks like this. This is the butterfly that I know too well uh, because it lives in the area, it is very common in the area where I live. Uh, so I I love those guys so much. Oh, this one is actually flying. Finally, a flying butterfly in here, uh, because I was I used to catch those when I was a child. I, I had I used to have a net and I was catching those butterflies. Uh, of course, releasing them after, but uh, this was what I did as a child. Uh, so this is this European peacock, really beautiful. Uh, but we have some other ones, of course. Uh, we have the this blue one, this Melaranus blue more something. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is probably my favorite. Like this blue coloration on the on those guys is so like vivid and it has this like iridescency to it. I don't know. It just looks amazing. Just look at this. Just look at those guys. I love how many of those you can have in this enclosure. You can have up to ninety. Uh, so this is a lot but let me just tell you one thing those guys breed like crazy you have to have this management set in here because they will flood this uh, enclosure with the babies right now i have the uh, like the aging of the animals uh, down to five five times less or something uh, so they don't breed like that but when i had it a normal when i was uh, waiting for all those animals to breed 
I just had those notifications one after another. Uh, so yeah, you have to have it uh, turned on. So we can actually have a look at the Zoopedia, uh, for example, for this one. Every of those bats, butter, butterflies have their own Zoopedia like uh, Zoopedia page. Uh, so if this one, for example, leaves in here, I won't, I won't probably read all the facts about them because uh, this video would be too long. But as you guys can see, we can have up to 90 of those. And the thing is that they don't live long. This one leaves for nine months, but there's one, I don't remember which one, that leaves only for two and a half months. So this is probably why uh, this leaves actually for one year i wouldn't make time just waste time to look for it, the guy that lived only for two and a half months but as you oh this is the one this guy lives only for two and a half months so you know it is just dying off and breeding and dying off and breeding uh because you know two months in this game is basically what a minute or something so uh, you have to have it in mind and they have three to six offspring per my one mating event so uh, a lot of breeding but actually when my uh, like trading center was full of those butterflies I was able to sell them for 50,000 I think dollars so uh, if you are playing in franchise definitely add the walkthrough exhibits for the but from for the butterflies because this will give you so much <laughs> uh, money uh, yeah this is the money machine basically so and the last thing that I would like to show you in this episode, in this video, are the new animal signs. So we are getting the signs for all the new animals. So here is the one for the blue wildebeest. This is the caracal. Those are so beautiful. Uh, this is the emu, the maned wolf, uh, the armadillo, the wallaby, and the striped hyena. And then we have those moving things for the butterflies. I just love those. I am totally in love. And they are opening those uh, like wings more and more. Uh, maybe you won't see it right now, but sometimes they are just fully open. And this thing comes with this. Oh, yeah. So this is the moment where they all open their wings. It, this thing comes because we can make it like basically uh, like higher. So this thing comes with this animal sign pole, sign pole. And this right now is my favorite building piece in the game. Just imagine all the possibilities you can do with this. Like all the, I don't know, for example, the hot wires for your enclosures. I don't know, different things using those things, those tiny, tiny poles. I cannot wait to use it. I know many people will be happy with the addition of this small thing. I know that my friend leader will come up with some, you know, crazy things <laughs> like building with this piece. And yeah, I am so happy that it was added. And then we have the statue of the armadillo. If you will complete the career scenario, I am sure that you will unlock the bronze, uh, silver and the golden uh, statue of the armadillo as well. But yeah, the new butterflies are so Oh, cool just look at them okay guys so this was it when it comes to the showcase of the new animals added to the game with the new grasslands animal pack i must really say that i love most of those animals i am so happy that they were added i think that they those are some of the best models uh, of the animals that we have in planet zoo i think that frontier is just nailing it with those designs so uh, i am so so happy about this pack my favorites are probably the armadillo uh, the caracal the emu and the blue wildebeest but i also love the wallaby i just love them all this is so hard to choose but uh, the armadillo especially for its size the wildebeest for the design the caracal for the design the emu what am i seeing here this is a huge plot twist look we have the bl the albino or is it a leucistic one i just wanted to end this video and now we have the leucistic small little emu so i can confirm that those are in the game uh, and just look at this guy really really nice like those uh, blue eyes are just beautiful so no we won't wait till it's uh till it is you know uh, adult but 
Uh, I can confirm that the Lossistic version of the Emu is definitely in the game. I love this pack. If you are wondering if you should get it, I definitely will say that you should because uh, those animals are beautiful, exceptional, as I told you, and really, really nice additions to our zoos. Okay, guys, so I think that this is all when it comes to today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, uh, give it a big thumbs up down below, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, and of course, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed today's video, and if you don't want to miss any of my future uploads. Please leave a comment down below if you enjoyed today's video and tell me what animals are your uh, like favorite what 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 are the ones that you cannot wait to add to your zoos after seeing today's video uh, if you like to support the channel a little bit extra you can do it with the join button down below uh, and there yeah that's all guys thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one bye guys Thank you.